Hey what's up guys, it's Covert Code here and in today's video I'm going to be teaching you guys how you can save data. So the first thing we need to do is um, import everything back from the previous tutorial I made about how to make a currency system. I'm going to show that on the screen now and you guys can just go and watch that tutorial and make everything you need so you can actually proceed with this tutorial. Now, the first thing we want to do is go to uh, server script service here and delete this bit over here okay because we're going to be typing up a new script for that um, which is going to be basically handling everything which is related to data so we're just going to click on server script service um, and double tap on script now if you don't see these things go to view uh, you've got explorer here which is this tab and you've also got um, insert object here so just find that from up here okay guys um, by the way, a very, very important thing that you need to enable before you actually start this tutorial, okay, is this over here. So go to Home, Settings, and Security. Now make sure this is on, because if this is not on, then you cannot save data while you're in studio, okay? So it won't work for you unless you have this option here on. So then you just close that up, double tap on the script, as I said before, call this data. Okay, so the first thing we're going to be doing is declaring the data store service. I'm going to explain what this is. Uh, service equals game get service. Yep, uh, data store service. So basically, what this is is it's the service which handles anything which relates to data. So if you need to get uh, any saved data for a player, you would consult with the data store service. If you have any data that you want to save, you would also consult with the data store service, okay? So, now, I'm just going to type this out, it will be version equals one, I'm about to explain what I'm doing. Data store service, get data store, uh, let's call this coins, because we're going to be saving coins. So, and also, the version. Okay, so, Basically, you know how I said that the data store service here uh, is the thing that you need to go to to actually check if someone has data or if you want to submit data to save. So this is basically a subsection of the data store service. So you have this sort of huge folder here, which we are calling coins, okay? Um, and this folder, so to speak, will have... Um, all the data relating to the players is coins data, I guess you could say, yeah? And this over here, the D version, is just honestly for convenience's sake. So if you want to reset the data, you would just change this number here and suddenly um, you're trying to get the folder, okay, the data store, called coins2, okay? That's what this means. If you don't know what these two lines, I mean two dots here mean, it's continuation, so basically this is going to be the equivalent of coins2. If I change this to 1, it's going to be coins1, okay? So if you change this, even if I change this, like this, you know, um, it will change the data store you get. So you want to make sure that you don't accidentally reset this, okay? So, um, now, whenever someone joins, so we're going to use player added for that, so whenever a player joins, this function here is going to run, okay? And now, whenever someone joins, we want to check if they have data. So local previous data equals save get async player.user ID. So what are we doing here? So it's pretty basic so far. So we're declaring this um, variable here. So if you don't know what that is, check out my basics um, series. Um, so we're declaring this variable called previous data and we're setting it to the get async function for our folder or data store here, okay? So we're basically asking it, hey, does this player here have any previous data relating to this data store, which we called coins1, okay? And this here, the argument that we're passing, the parameter, whatever you want to call it, um, is the user ID. So let me just explain something really quickly. This here, the text that I'm highlighting, is what's called a key. Now, a key is something that you use to open the player's metaphorical um, 
uh, vault of data. So if you don't have this key, you cannot access the player's data files, okay? Also, say, let me just explain this. So player one has key hello, okay? So this is his key. So you use this to access player one's data. And player two has key hello two, okay? And you use this to access players two, uh, player two's is, um, coins data store, okay? So if I change this to hello, suddenly player two is no longer accessing play, um, his own um, coins data store anymore. He's accessing player one's is, um, data store using his key. So that is something you need to look out for because the key always, always has to be unique, okay? A good example of this would be, uh, so if I click play here and go to players, every player on Roblox has a unique user ID. So this is my user ID here, and I can use this to make a unique key because every user ID on Roblox is different for every player, okay? So that's why we're going to use player.userID. So the next thing we need to do is, uh, let me just clear up this here. So let's just set a variable to coins. So local coins, okay? We're not setting that to anything. We're just declaring a blank variable there. Um, so now we need to check if they actually have data because this returned whether or not they have data, but we haven't checked this variable yet. So if previous data is not equal to nil, so that means that if the previous data is existent, pretty much, um, we're going to set the coins value to previous data because this here returns a number value. I'll tell you why in a second or towards the end of the tutorial, actually. Um, so basically, if their data exists, we're setting the coins value to whatever their data is, which is previous data. Okay. Uh, else, um, I think I did it. Yeah, I did a tutorial on conditional statements. So if you don't know what I'm doing right now, check out the tutorial with conditional statements. Okay. Um, so else we're setting the coins to zero because if they have no data, this is the value at which their data will start. So if, if someone's new to a game, they won't have any data. Okay. So they will start off with zero coins and now we're just setting the data. So set async, uh, player dot user ID zero. So same thing as get async, but instead of getting the data, we're setting the data. Okay. So we're getting the data using this player ID. I mean, yeah, this player user ID, which is the key. Remember that that is called the key. Okay. So if you're getting the data using this key, you must also set the data using the same key that you're using. So make sure these here are the same. Okay. And now we're just setting the data to zero. So we're saving their data to zero. So whenever they join again, they'll actually have data. Okay. Um, and that data will be zero. Okay. So now we actually need to make our little system here work because as far as I can tell, it's no, uh, no longer working. So if I just click this, yeah, it's not working. Okay. So let me just fix that really quickly. So local coins value. So this is the same thing I did in the previous tutorial, but I'll explain it again anyway. This is dot new number value player uh, coins value dot name equals currency coins value dot value equals coins. So we're creating a new value underneath the player here. Okay. And then we're naming that to currency. So let me just illustrate this for you guys. Um, player currency. Okay. And now we're setting the data. I mean the, uh, the value for the coins to, uh, whatever coins is. Okay. That might be a bit confusing, but coins here is a variable and coins value is this object here. Okay. We can, you can rename this if you're confused, no worries. I'm just using that term for now. Um, so basically if coins, I mean, if the player has no data, it will be set to zero because we're setting coins is equal to zero here. Okay. But if they already have data, coins will then be equal to previous data. So if they had 50 coins when they joined, then this here will be 50. If they had zero coins when they joined, this will be zero. Okay. So, uh, now 
we only need to do the final thing. We actually need to save the data. So whenever they leave, um, you want to save their data. So game.players.player removing connect function player. So this is the same thing as this function here. Okay. Um, actually, this event which triggers this function, but you don't need to know that. You just need to know that whenever someone joins, everything in here will run. Okay. Okay. So, and here, whenever someone leaves, everything inside of this um, event function here will trigger. Okay. It will execute itself. Uh, so local value equals player dot currency dot value. So we're just trying to find this value we created here. So whenever someone leaves, we're going to, um, let's see, we're going to player. Okay. So if I left, this would be the player here. Okay. And then you're trying to find currency. So dot currency dot value. Okay. So that's what we're trying to read over there. Um, so if value is not equal to nil, so if the value actually exists, okay, so if we've managed to find the value, then we can save it. So print, um, found data to save for, let me just not overcomplicate this for you guys. So this will basically print out found data to save for whatever the player's name is. Okay. So this means, hey, great, I actually have data to save and we're going to save the data. If you didn't manage to find the value, then we're going to print out uh, did not manage to find data for wh whoever it is. Okay. Um, then same thing over here. We can actually copy and paste this actually. So copy and paste. Okay. Um, and we're going to call this value because now whenever they leave we don't want to set their data to zero every time they leave so if someone gets 1000 coins in your game you don't want that data that coin amount to resort to zero when they leave okay because they'll be very mad at you um so you want to save the value that they acquired while they were in your game and when they leave you save that value now this is a basic data store tutorial so if you're kind of advanced and you want to look into this on your own, you can use update on update async, something like that, update async. So you don't completely reset your value. If you're a beginner, just ignore everything I just said with, within the last five seconds. That's fine. Just use set async, okay? But if you're trying to go for better practice, do not use set async at the end, okay? Use update. Um, so that's pretty much it. Um, we can also print saved data for player.name. Okay, so that's how you save data. So let me just, um, yeah, we can run this. My bad. Um, I forgot to actually do something really small here. So we're going to save the data whenever someone leaves and whenever the game shuts down. Okay, because you don't want the game to accidentally like shut down or something like that and the player loses all their data. So that's why we're going to add game bind to close function so whenever the game is about to shut down so let me show you guys something so if i click play here okay just ignore this five i was testing while i was recording uh it should be zero okay but um if i click stop that is the game closing so if i click i mean print out stopped okay and I click stop, see how it printed out stop, but it did not print out save data for uh, the player name. Okay. That is why we're adding the, the, the uh, bind to close. So this runs whenever the server is about to shut down slash, I mean, slash stop. Um, let me just leave that print in there. And what we want to do is loop. Um, so if you, I think I covered loops. Uh, check out my beginner series. So, so for I V in pairs, game not players get players do. Uh, so basically I'm going to loop. So a loop, basically, uh, if I have four players, let's just say in my case, I have one player here. So it's going to go to players and it's going to go to covert code. And then if there's someone else, 
it's going to go through their name as well and it's going to save all of our data pretty much okay um so we're just going to copy this here and then copy that and in this case we're gonna call this player okay and this way if we just click play and uh just tap on our money or remove our money we're at 20 right now we leave it saved the data for covert code and then if i join back it's at 20. Okay, so that just proves that this works. If this doesn't work for you, make sure to check out um, the game settings up here. Go to security and enable this. If it still doesn't work for you, then try this by actually joining your game and then leaving. Okay, but as you can see here, um, it actually works. Okay, so that's it for this tutorial, guys. If you like this video, like and subscribe, um, and I'll be posting more tutorials soon. Thank you guys and girls for uh, watching.